Alright, hello, hi, hello. Right now I am just going through and doing some lead code questions. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this is a couple of reasons. One is that I really feel like I have not been doing a lot of studying this year. Two, I never really did a lead code quote unquote grind. And three, you know, I'm trying to go for interviews. I'm trying to, you know, one up right now. And lead code questions aren't necessarily quote unquote required. But I personally like them because I don't view them as like quote unquote leak code grinding. It's more so kind of like if you ever did math homework or math problems. It's, they're literally just exercise problems. The whole point is to learn. This isn't about a time thing. This is not about, oh, I need to crank out, you know, people say I need to crank out 300 lead code questions. Maybe you could do 10. Maybe you do 10 in an area you're weak in and that's enough. Maybe you do 50, maybe you do 100, maybe you do 1,000. Point I'm trying to make is, is that I am basically trying to, you know, review problems, uh, get my brain working a little. And also, to be completely honest, I have a terrible track record in terms of when I'm giving questions. Sometimes I don't define it properly in terms of solving it quickly and relatively easily. And that's a great example with this problem here. This problem right here is, uh, I guess it's rated medium. I guess there's easy, medium, and hard on Lee code. Um, and it's basically saying, given an M times N matrix, if an element is zero, set its entire row and column to zero. Do it in place. So in place, basically, don't make another array. Now, here's one mistake that I made. It wasn't a terrible mistake. But first time I was reading this, I was just looking at this example, a three by three array. In my mind, I'm thinking, okay, so three by three, four by four, M by M. It's not M by M, it's M by N. Uh, and a lot of times with questions like this, it's also good to take into consideration like the test cases. Because uh, if this was like an actual like interview question, they usually, I don't remember if they give you test cases. Uh, but you kind of have to make your own because uh, you don't cover all bases unless you really look at everything. And sometimes you think you have the solution and you may not. So, all right. So it's basically saying the problem being that say you give some array... Uh, of some size that if there is a zero in the in in the row uh, then that entire row becomes zero and then that entire column will become zero uh, so the column will become all zeros and the rows will become all zero so uh, right off the bat with a matrix first thing I thought of was a loop within a loop so let's go ahead and say for int i equals zero i is less than matrix dot length. Now this is kind of important because it's possible to make the mistake of say, you know, for you're gonna see right now for int j equals zero, j is less than matrix zero dot length. Now the reason why we do this is because the array length, j plus plus, the array length of the inner array is different than the outer array or it can be and by the way if you don't if you never took linear algebra if matrices are kind of like weird i is basically the row and then j would be the column okay now that's how i think of it now it's whatever whatever you want to think of it you can think of it way but that's how i'm representing it in my mind um so what i'm going to do is that if um if matrix i of j equals zero if for some reason this entry in the matrix is zero then what i'm going to do is i'm going to for all columns int k equals zero k less than uh matrix zero dot length uh, K plus plus I am going to go ahead in every single column I'm gonna mark it zero so what is what that means is matrix I of K uh, now let's see am I right in doing this am I right in doing this da, 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 da. no I'm not this is okay so you got to pay attention you can't just go through here. So what I'm saying here is that for every row, go through and the J position of the matrix will become zero. So it's going to go down the list and at this J position, it's going to become zero. So for example, 
two, like say of the first array, um, the second spot is a zero. So row one, two, zero, row two, two, zero, row three, two, zero, etc. So matrix K of J is equal to zero. Okay. So that's pretty straightforward. That's pretty easy. So let's go ahead. I have this test case sitting here. Uh, let's run it and we'll see that we will get uh, what happened line uh, come on what did I miss a I guess I missed a parentheses at some point all right so let's see judging judging stop judging me all right so as you can see we went through and all the columns are zero it'd be nice if the input was like you know, representative to what you saw on the left as a matrix, but whatever. Um, so the input is, all the columns are zero. So that middle zero, what we got was zero, zero, zero. Now, this is what I did. I said, okay, all right, cool. So basically, I did it so that all the columns are zero. And I'm modifying in place this matrix, okay? Now, the next thing I did was... I said, you know what, time to do the rows. Now what I did was, I went through blah, 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 similar logic, right? Or actually, I could do it right here. I could do it right in this area. Whoops. I could do it right in this area where I have another little loop. And instead of it being K of J, it will be uh, I of K. So for every single row that we see ij0 go ahead and mark that row as zero now where you're about to see is okay what's the problem here i'll put 101 101 101 okay this didn't even do anything why well, didn't do anything uh it did not do anything because we are well what's the problem why didn't it change why didn't it change? So I of J. Oh, my bad. Meant to put K, not J. All right. These uh, these variables. It's too much for me. Okay, so matrix I of K. So okay, so now this is the problem that I realized is that we're modifying the array as we see it. And we are then modifying it again. So we're basically double dipping. We're adding zeros that the original array didn't have. We're adding zeros to the column, right? On column, you know, say the third column, we added the zero. And then by our logic, that last column all will be zero. That's not right. That's not what the original array change was supposed to be. Um, and this is where I spent a good 45 minutes where I shouldn't really have spent a good 45 minutes. This is like a lot simpler and sometimes it's good to be simple like a lot of times I'll try to do the most optimal solution and I end up wasting a ridiculous amount of time because I think it's easy it'll be you know it'll be oh it'll be 10 minutes 15 minutes 20 minutes it took me 45 minutes this problem should not have taken me 45 minutes at most 20 30 minutes it, you know first time you're seeing it just to think through uh, but a good 45 minutes was me floundering and trying to figure out oh okay how can I do this so that, oh, um, if I see the J and I see J, that means skip J. Okay, every time I've seen the J position, don't do it. And then I thought to myself, oh, well, what if I did this? What if I did that? Keep it simple. Don't worry about it being super complex. You could make it better. Keep it simple. I looked at the matrix. Don't even look at the code. Forget that. Look at the matrix. I want that. Look at... And, and this is the thing, we want a snapshot, okay? Now here's the thing, it's easier to take a snapshot than it is to do state management. Because state management is now, you're adding all this logic, you're adding all these different things, and it's going to be ridiculous. Just take a snapshot. Go ahead and look at this matrix, and I know that I want to, this row is going to become zero, everything else is going to be fine, and then these columns will become zero. Now, here's the thing. If you didn't notice, I noticed this, and, you know, this may or may not be common sense, but notice that the columns changing to zero are the affecting item before change, right? 
And the same thing, the rows. Say if I change the rows, every time I see a, a zero in entry, I make the row zero. Um, well, let me think, actually, is that true? I find zero in the row, mark all zero. Uh, yeah, it kind of is, because then that would imply that in the same operation, I mark all is zero. And then at the same time, I also have state management to say, oh, okay, I just marked all these rows zero, but by the way, um, I marked all these rows zero, right? But by the way, this one wasn't zero, and this one wasn't zero, and then now I have like if for logic, this, that, making it more complex than I need it to be. Do the columns, do the rows. Now, I already know if I do the columns, it looks like it doesn't even matter about the rows. Like the rows, I the rows, I can just get the information beforehand and store it. And that would be easy. That's the easiest thing. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to leave the columns. The columns look like it's fine. We get the column part in the bag. But I just literally want to know while surveying this matrix. And by the way, you can think of a, a matrix as a graph as well. And whatever you want to think of it. Whatever. Uh, I'm basically trying to see when I visit IJ... Is it ever zero in that row? If it is, I want to know. And we can do this in on time simply by doing a, a loop. So I'm going to make another loop for int i equals zero, i less than matrix dot length. Uh, we, maybe we could do it in the original loop, but I'd rather just do it like this because, again, time. Just keep it simple. Um, time complexity is going to be the same, too. Um, for int j equals zero, j less than matrix zero dot length j plus plus. Okay, and then and by the way, this is n squared, not n. Uh, what are we doing? What are we doing? We are going to go ahead and say that if matrix i of j, if at some point we encounter i of j equals zero. What are we going to do? I want to store this information. I want it to be some type of memory unit. A stack, a queue, a list, whatever. I want a linked list. Linked list, list equals new. Linked list. Make this an integer. And what this integer is going to be is going to be the i or the row entry so we're going to do list dot add i because i is the row break out of the loop now i know that this i this i has a zero entry okay now i add it to the list now i know hey listen i gotta go through this list and and this is the list of rows and i need to go and make them zeros that's that's just how it is they need to be zeros right so I'm going to go through, add it to the list. Okay, I got my zero, break out of the loop, go forward, keep going. And now at this point, I have everything I need in order to make the final array. All I need to do is this portion is going to turn the columns into zeros. This portion tells me which rows at instantiation basically had zeros in it before I changed the array. So again, you know, we could put this all in one loop or we can just keep it simple. Who cares? If people are going to judge me for the way that I write my code and the time complexity is the same, I really don't care. Like, it's literally the most simple thing. And when you're strapped for time, guess what? It is what it is. So actually, we don't even need uh, an int i for loop. We could just do um, advanced for loop or whatever they call it. Integer, integer. And we're going to do list. And then this basically is going to iterate through the list. And these are going to be the rows. And for every single row, I want the uh, columns to change. So already we have some columns changed. Uh, J is less than matrix 0 to length. J++. plus plus. So what I want, there's no logic here, is matrix integer and then j equals zero so what i'm doing here is that i know that through this list that of these integers which represent the array index that go to that row go to this row change that 
to zero. Change every single row to zero. Now, uh, obviously some of these are gonna already be zero, but whatever, time complexity is the same. So let's go ahead and run the test now. And this should end up passing properly. We could also use this other array, I guess. So yeah, that ended up working fine. Um, so let's, can we, can we copy paste this as is? Let's see. It's the same thing, right? It's the same exact thing. It's just represented differently. Let's see. Runtime error. Ah, oh, come on, dude. You really gonna like cry about a new line? All right. No new lines. No new lines. Uh, does it need to be an array of arrays? Yeah, it needs to be an array of arrays, right? An array of arrays. Right? Is that how the is that how the test had it? Yeah, that's how the test had it. That is how the test had it. All right, so an array of arrays, and then this should also pass. Uh huh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, index three out of bound for lane three, line twenty five. Uh, what is the issue here? Okay, yeah, I need to pay attention. So the issue being here is that I'm using I, this is the rows, and then I was using J, like J's length for that, and it's not guaranteed that length, like it's M by N matrix, not M by M, so try to keep that in mind. I even missed that, and I already did this in the past. Um, all right, so we got that, and now let's just submit it, and this will run through like a bunch of other test cases. And I'm pretty sure this will be fine. And it's accepted. Okay, five milliseconds, faster than 7% of job online submission. So at least it's better than someone. I don't know if there's a way to do this in N login or N. Uh, memory usage 42.2 and then less than I, whatever. Okay. Um, so there's probably a way to optimize this. But uh, really for me, uh, I just wanted to put this solution just for myself really. Uh, but also to say that for problems like this, this is an extremely, extremely simple approach. Just take a snapshot. Here, here's the loop. Go through the loop. Take a snapshot. Go through here. Change the columns. Go through the loop of the aforementioned rows. Change the rows to zero. Super simple. Three, basically three loop centric uh, blocks of logic. Runtime could be a little bit better. This runtime isn't terrible. This runtime definitely is like... This is going to end up being like n cube uh, in the case of when ij is zero. Uh, but the point being that for me, I'm trying to do a little more, more in terms of problems. And I definitely could do a lot better when it comes to just reading the question and answering it in the most simple way possible. Because at the end of the day, you know, the hardest part about this is the logic portion. The optimization is also good and it's also important. But, you know, there's been a lot of times where I've done interviews in the past or even tests for classes, and I'm really trying to optimize in the beginning when I should really just be focusing on getting to the answer, getting to the brass tacks, and just getting to the finish line, and then you could go back if you have time and optimize and change and do whatever. Uh, but hey, at the end of the day, you know what I mean, this is not like an actual you know, piece of uh, code that is going to be run anywhere and it is not in the same constraints, it's not in the same testing facilities. Uh, so I don't feel too bad about it right now. But uh, that is the solution, that is a little bit of exclamation, explanation in regards to it. And if I can give any advice to anyone, take your time and try to plan out the problem and try to Think about the solution before you just start writing because sometimes you can think that it's really easy, but in reality, you're missing the point and you're kind of going off the beaten path. 